The chair recognizes the honorable member of Carolina Rumkey and St. Salvador. I'm talking the dead. <laughs> Madam Speaker, you know, you know, uh, there's a reason why why Kalani is there, and we're here. Very good reason. Because he has no shame. Right. First of all, we told the Bahamian people what we thought of him, and I suspect they agreed. They, he over there, were telling the Bahamian people what they thought of me. Yeah. The Bahamian people did not agree. Lies. That's what they. Right. They did not agree. That's why we're here, and they're there. And further, the the disinterring of all the broadsides and, and dark um, videos. videos and all that they threw. Bahamian people were beyond that. And so to, you know, they talk about the fired Bamsi. What has that got to do with the context in which Bamsi was birthed? Where's the Oban file? Right. Mm -hmm. Lost. And um, he, he continues to talk about what we ain't doing or what we should be doing. We've been here six months. Six months? Only oh, I've been today. Five, 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 five months. Today's the sixth thing. Tomorrow makes five months. Well, let me just say this. Let's look at our first five months and compare it to yours. Oh, they were on vacation. You were on vacation. For the first three months. They were and then chased, I was, I was chasing ghosts. <laughs> call <laughs> corruption and locking up politicians oh, unnecessarily, <laughs> costing the Bahamian people. Trumped up cases. Uh, Trump up cases. Millions. Right. And millions of dollars. <coughs> and you continue to talk these things. What, what do you say? You all, all said, what else you can say with me? Let's look forward, man. Let's talk. Let's go forward. <laughs> no, yeah, I look, no, no, see, I look like you're the leader. You're the leader now. Oh, sorry, see, he doesn't speak. Oh, remember, oh, oh doesn't I beg your pardon. Yeah, he doesn't speak for that. He doesn't speak for that. Right? Consistently, but, he doesn't speak. But, but, you know, you, you talk so much about the fire, but, you know, ask the Kalani. I wonder if he, why did he speak about the fact that this fire <coughs> was the act of a criminal. It was arson, deliberately set. And ask the Kalani whether he knew who did it. Yeah. And ask him whether that person was related to him. Yeah. And perhaps you may even ask whether, I'll, I'll put it this way, whether it was a murder, murder in the cathedral syndrome that who infected, would infected <laughs> that person <laughs> who caused the fire. I'll say no more than that. I'll say, I'll say no more than that. You see, the speaker, you know, I rise today to support a magnificent initiative birthed by our former Former Prime Minister, former leader yes. of the Progressive Party, Barry Gladstone Christie, yes. who was visionary to recognize that the time for talk was at the end, and 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 that um and. You could ask me. You're an echo. I'm sorry. You, could ask, me to, you ask me to yield. No, no. Or I'm, a, point I'm a, point, a point of order. Point of order. State point of order. Thank, thank you very much, yeah. Look, Madam Speaker. I was sitting while the member for Kent Island, Ram Keen and Savalo, was speaking, and I assume that the member for Kalani was still in the house when he was making the statements. I was, I was, I was unaware that he was not, and I think. Um, so, ma Madam. Ma so, Madam Speaker, and so, 
take your time. So, Madam, Madam, Madam Speaker, so I'm, I'm, particularly, I'm particularly concerned with the imputations that the member for Kent Island, Ram Kins in Salvador, uh, put into the public domain in referencing the fire. I would, I would ask, Madam Speaker, I'm, I'm certain he is not, I'm, I'm, certain, I'm certain in his skillful asking of questions, he was not suggesting that the member for Kalani collaborated with someone by virtue of the relationship to cause damage to, to Bamzi. So I'm asking that that be, that be withdrawn and that the member, and that the member, if he wishes to put that on public record, that he do so when the member is present and has an opportunity to defend, to defend himself. I don't, believe, I don't believe it is appropriate that we permit that to stay on the record in the manner it was delivered in the absence, in the absence of the member. And so I'm asking you, I'm asking you, the member to withdraw that. I'm asking you to withdraw it, give the member an opportunity to be present, and then you can, you can then re restate that. In the, ab in the absence of him withdrawing it, I would ask, my, uh, I would ask Madam, Madam Speaker that you expunge it from, from the record. First of all, might I, you know, <laughs> why would you say that about your, about your member? You I did not, it? why would you think that of your member? You I, never, I never said anything you said I said about your member. <laughs> I asked one or two questions, and no answers were given, and therefore I would I would have thought that you'd wait, but you bell the cat. You bell the cat. Not me. And, and you know, and I and, you know, and I, I, understand, you know, I understand, you know, I understand, I understand, you know, because you did not even recognize. One member. There's one member on the floor. You 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 you, you are. You have put Kalani so far behind you that you didn't even recognize when he leave the chambers. Man, you, man, please, man. No, 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 don't do that. Don't do, you know. See, that's, you did that to him in his absence. You, you did that. No, 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 no. I, I ask questions. When the, when, the, when the questions are answered, then we could deduct what it is. But it looked as though you wanted to answer the questions. And, uh, no, I'm not going to try. No, I answer questions. I ask questions. There's a member on the floor. There's only questions. What are you standing on? I ask questions. I made no statements. And there are no answers to the questions. Do you want to answer the questions for Kalani? I think you. Chair recognizes the honorable member for Madam Speaker, in light of the fact that the member for Cat Island Ramkins in Salvador is not prepared to withdraw, I would ask that it be expunged, and if the member wishes to restate it when he's present. See, Madam Speaker, here's, here's what the issue is. Any number of us have the ability to ask questions that can cast certain kinds of aspersions on each other. I don't think that we want to, I don't think we want to go down, I don't think we want to go down that road. Honorable member. I, I, don't, I don't think we want to go down that road, so that's all I'm asking. I think okay. it's a simple matter. I, okay. The, the chair recognizes the member for Cat Island. I ask some questions. It's the member whose um, creative mind suggested what those questions may have, uh, may have, it, and, it's, and it's only in your mind. I wonder why you think, think about your former leader like that. You see, you are thinking about your former leader. That's the only reason why you, you said it. You have the linguistic dexterity no, 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 no. to Mr. phrase Speaker, it the way you Speaker, want. Just be drawing. Madam Speaker, I thought no such thing. <laughs> this member here thinks like that. I mean, why would you think about those things? Just be drawing until he comes. I ask questions, and you think I'm saying these things about you. Man, you should think about the better things, man. Think about the leader differently from that. So, um, Mr. Speaker, as I said, this bill, I'm not withdrawing it. Um, you put on record what you thought about your leader, not me. Honourable <laughs> member. Honourable member. Honourable member. I mean, you're formally, sorry, sorry, sorry. Some assertions as the member for Cat Island, Rumpkins, and Salvador was not present as well. These things happen all the time in debate. So if I start that today, today, are you willing to follow the rules, Marcus? Yeah, what, what is the assertion? I'm sorry, I, I missed the assertion. What was the assertion? No, 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 no. You're not going back to that. Because, no, because, because and, 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 and listen, and listen, members do it all the time on both sides. 
Mm. So don't act like this is something brand new today. It is not. You have done it in the past. No, sir. Give the example. I am certain. I like the term. I am certain. I am certain. No, what I would suggest. You might not have done that, but I'm certain that members were missing from this place. I would not assert of a member. I would no, no, not assert of a member no. or imply what was implied. That's what I'm saying. I would not well, say Marco City, um, take your seat, please. Yeah. The Mr. chair will not be challenged. No, no problem. Okay. Mr. Thank you. No First of all, I, I, never, I never said that the member for Kalani collaborated with the, with the criminal act of which I spoke. I never said that. You said it. Right. You said it. Didn't you say it? No, no, I did not. No, I didn't imply it. You See, perhaps what you sh perhaps you sh perhaps you should have asked me what what murder in the cathedral syndrome meant. Then, then you would not have had you would not have had you would not have come to that. No, no, I'm just saying. So I, I know what I said and I know what I'm saying. You put on record what you were put on record about your. Uh, <laughs> So there's no need for me to expand, because once you understand or understood what is meant by murder in the cathedral syndrome that may have afflicted that person, you'll know I was excusing him. I was excusing him from the act, the criminal act of burning the, burning the, uh, the building. The member for Kalani. You see, if you understood, that's why I'm saying if you, if you, if you appreciated what murder in the cathedral syndrome meant, you would have understood that I was excusing him from the act. You remember, you remember the thing who would rid me of this meddlesome priest? Huh? You remember that? And you remember what happened in the cathedral after that was said? Socks and dogs die. <laughs> so, you see, now, you know, put it on the record now. You. So, uh, uh, Speaker. So, um, Madam Speaker, as I said, uh, the visionary thought of our former leader and former Prime Minister's country, recognizing that it was time to stop talking and to act, and act decisively and progressively to rid ourselves of uncertainty when it comes to our food security. And so I'm pleased to be here to put in legislative form that vision birthed by him. In our blueprint for change, this administration paid keen attention to the issue of food security. In the wake of COVID-19 pandemic, um, and the critical supply chain issues and related costs that have driven prices up, it is clear that we cannot return to business as usual in this country when it comes to reducing imports and making steps towards balancing the trade deficit. One of the first areas we will strongly push towards is food security. The Bahamas must begin to feed itself and we have to stop talking about it. Food security must be embedded in our national development plan and must be at the forefront of strategic development goals. In our blueprint for change, we committed to providing resources and access to funding for agriculture and fisheries related enterprises. Our farmers and fishers will play a vital role in a new paradigm that emerges over the next five years. When the former PLP administration launched BAMSI over seven years ago, it was the vision of a day. It was a vision of a day when Bahamian farmers will play a significant role in feeding the country. We knew then what we know now, to build an industry led and owned by Bahamians, we must prepare and educate the next generation of leaders and innovators in the industry to have financial and creative capital to meet these lofty goals. Institutions like BAMSI 
work at the foundational level in nation building. Through education and access to opportunities, we will address existing socioeconomic inequalities, socioeconomic inequalities, and diversify the avenues for wealth generation in the Bahamas. Of course, this work won't be easy. Guiding the local agriculture and fisheries industries to the next level is heavy for any government. Fortunately, fortunately, Madam Speaker, in the Member of Parliament for Central and South Elutra, we have a Minister of Agriculture who is more than up to the task. Yes. As has been said, he wants to bring the sexy back yes. to the industry. More and more, you talk to young people in this country. We had them say that they are studying sustainable farming, agribusiness, horticulture, and other related fields. You know, there was a time when to explore these areas meant you intended to leave the country. People would ask, well, where are you going to, how are you going to use that? Because the impression was that there's no opportunity for farmers in the Bahamas. Looking around, we can see farmers' markets springing up and more local businesses that use homegrown agricultural products within their manufacturing processes. The progress is slow, but we are, we are changing the perception of farming as a viable career in this country, and we are going to make it sexy again. Yeah. By leveraging advancements in agricultural techniques and tapping into the latest technologies, we find more efficient and sustainable ways of growing the industry. Take a look at Eden Farms, soon to be Eden Acres, as an example of what is possible within our borders. That one initiative is expected to significantly impact the number of food products imported into the country. These pioneering young Bahamians are taking advantage of containerized agriculture and artificial intelligence, which allows for a consistent an efficient yield in a country of vulnerable, in a country vulnerable to the impacts of major hurricanes and the forces of climate change. But just having one Eden Farms is in the goal. Our objective is to empower young Bahamians to see these kinds of innovative nation-building initiatives springing up all over the Bahamas. It should be a source of pride for all that successive PLP governments have laid the groundwork for future successes in this area. Madam Speaker, the PLP as an organization prides itself on laying the foundation required for our collective national development. The member from Engliston spoke about some of the initiatives. Much of that development happens through national institutions that we have launched that continue to contribute to the strength of our nation. And again, the member for Angleston listed some of those institutions. With BAMSI, we understood from the onset that if we were to meet the challenges of genuinely addressing food security, we had to educate people in the skills necessary to build a modern agricultural industry. And I'm very disappointed in what has happened or had happened to BAMSI over the last four years, which was ably um, exposed by the member from Central and South Elutra in graphic photographs. We intend BAMSI. Graphic. <laughs> yeah. We'll play a massive role in our development. It's going to be a catalyst for growth for the Androsian people. My colleagues, I suspect from both sides of the political aisle, must agree that it is in all our interests to wake up that sleeping giant, Jack Andros. Yes, we are talking about the largest landmass in the Bahamas, which contains one of the world's largest natural marine nursery systems, producing fish that feed an entire region. 
If there's an island right with potential for agriculture and marine resources, it is Andros. Imagine what happens when we prioritize investing in research, sustainable development, and opportunities for our people. This should not just be an exciting prospect for the people of Andros, it should excite the entire country. BAMSI is the answer to how we nurture local talent as a nation while leveraging the Bahamian people's intellectual might to solve the age-old problem of feeding ourselves. Education is a critical first step in empowering our next generation of sustainable businesses. The next step is to secure opportunities for our people. This is why our government, in our blueprint for change, committed to providing financing for agribusiness to improve the scalability of the industry and build capacity. We have to ensure that Bahamians work at every level within this growing industry, from the ground floor straight up to the executive suite. And most of all, we must prioritize creating opportunities for Bahamian ownership within the industry. Our people will build this industry with their own hands, and they deserve to own a piece of the pie. Thanks to bright Bahamian minds, like the member of, for Central and South Elutra, and BAMSI's president, new president, the Senator Dr. Iricia Hepburn, who has vast experience in the field and is one of our foremost experts in agricultural policy and agricultural economics, and the member for Southern Shores, Leroy Major, and the Paul Sec, Leonardo Lightman from North Andrus and the Berry Islands. Right. Right. Those are the bright minds, bright young minds that will help deliver our agricultural policy and agricultural economics. And I'm confident that we can success, successfully make this transition towards a prosperous and sustainable future in agriculture and fisheries within the Bahamas. Many other bright young minds emerge who will accomplish far more than what we can imagine with the foundation we are building for them. Madam Speaker, our country remains challenged by this inflationary period. Rising shipping and fuel costs the breakdown of the global supply chain and other econ economic and logistical challenges have exposed a core vulnerability in our national development model. Without the ability to contribute in a meaningful way to feeding our people, we are entirely at the mercy of global trade winds when importing food into our country. As these costs have risen internationally, Bahamians have seen prices rise locally. What's even scarier, Madam Speaker, than the costs of being dependent on international forces beyond our control is that the supply itself is dependent. Should an international crisis ever occur that delivers a crippling shock to the global shipping industry, we would be hard-pressed to bring in enough food to feed our nation over the short to medium term. I'm reminded too, while I, about 9-11, when we were about two or three weeks short of being, of being able to import food for our people. It's those kind of internal shocks that we have to address, and that's why uh, and the former prime minister said, look, time for us to stop talking and acting. That heightens the urgency of now in getting this program off the ground. While this is an extreme scenario, we live through a revolutionary crisis right now in the form of COVID-19 pandemic. As we emerge from this pandemic, we must take lessons away from this crisis to mitigate the impact of future problems should future, future problems occur. The lessons of price inflation 
and supply issues have shown us that the time for talk to grow our food, as I said, is over. And as I said again, this is a time for action. The role of BAMC, BAIC, the Ministry of Agriculture, must be to advance domestic industries, to fill the gaps for bringing Bahamian grown produce to market, to offset the cost to Bahamian consumers. This means that we must find sustainable, efficient, and cost-effective ways to get this done so that our products can be competitive in the local market, both at cost and quality level. The government policies and funding priorities will go a long way towards realizing this reality. In conclusion, um, Madam Speaker, I believe that there is a brighter future in store for the Bahamas. My government remains committed to creating a fair and more equitable society for everyone. BAMSI has a vital role as we take steps towards that vision. Of course, we are not talking about something that will be achieved in a day or two. This is a vision that spans years, decades even. You know, when a painter puts the first stroke of his brush on a canvas, he can often already envision the painting as it will be when completed. That's the painter. Onlookers will not be able to see what he's creating with that first stroke, but they will learn to appreciate what he's doing by the time he's finished. BAMSI was launched amidst much criticism. We all remember it. In BAMSI, we have a first stroke in what will eventually amount to a finished work in creating sustainable opportunities for enterprising Bahamians, entrepreneurs, and enhancing food security for the nation. I fully support the BAMSI 2022 bill and I look forward to all of the exciting developments that will emerge as a result. I've heard some of the comments made about what is perceived to be one or two big gaps in the bill. But from hearing those gaps, it seemed to me that under, I think, a section five that empowers the minister to make regulations and other issues, those concerns can be addressed through regulations. And that's what we think we'll do. So I thank you, Madam Speaker. And may God continue to bless the Commonwealth of the Bahamas and bless my Minister of Agriculture and Fisheries, the Member of Parliament for Central. Thank you, Honorable Member. As many?